So you are carrying out a targeted enforcement operation. Grandma's in the house. She's undocumented. She get arrested too? It depends. Which? Let, let the judge decide. We're going to remove people that a judge has already deported. Is there a way to carry out mass deportation without separating families? Of course there is. Families can be deported together. We're back with Vaughn, Charlie, and Claire. Um, Vaughn, another bypassing of Senate confirmation, the person in charge of that will be that individual, uh, Mr. Hellman. Um, why, why is Czar post for that? Is it, is it temporary? They think they're going to be, be done quickly? Right. Well, he's now the third one who has been named in a czar capacity, or what I should say, potentially a czar capacity. We have reporting that uh, that Doug Burgum is going to take on a role of energy czar, and that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. directly told me that he could see himself serving in the White House, not as HHS secretary necessarily or head of any of the agencies, but in the administration in the White House as a, quote, White House health czar. Again, as you said, those would not be confirmable positions, and it is not clear exactly what kind of power those czars would be able to uh, wield. And in the sake of Tom Homan, he's been in there before. He was the acting director of ICE. And as our friend and colleague Jacob Soboroff reported so deeply in Separated that he was at the forefront of the zero tolerance family separation policy that the DHS has said to today there are still more than 1,300 kids that are separated from their families because of the policy. And Tom Homan, he has not stepped away from that. He has said that there needs to be a zero tolerance uh, a policy towards immigration coming to the United States in order to cut down the migration numbers. And that is where you see uh, him filling this need and this desire to work with the localities to try to implement what this mass deportation system that Donald Trump, we should be clear, proposed eight years ago but didn't implement. But now Donald Trump feels like he has an ally in there who understands the system, understands the administration, and is ready to use his capacity and power, not as a confirmable position, but as this borders are in order to do that. Uh, Charlie Sykes, the, the, the number that Trump ran on deporting, um, and that as Jacob was at the mm -hmm. convention carrying the signs and, and Vaughn, uh, mass deportations was 15 to 20 million. Jim Jordan let it slip um, yesterday that the number could be closer to 1.3 million. Let me play that for you in his own words. So people say, like, let's say one of these people is living in their apartment complex. Is the military going to come in? Is it the local law enforcement? How is it actually physically going to work? The, the Trump administration, the, the Department of Homeland Security, will work with local law enforcement and will we'll, we'll, we'll focus on the people who 1.3 million have already been in front of a judge and said, no, you're not entitled to stay here. You have to be removed. There's an order there, a court of law. They've had their due process. They've had their the, the, the whole process play okay, out. So what, let's move on beyond that population, non-criminals, uh, people who are in the country who are not um, legal citizens, those who have not committed crimes. The, we're, we're starting with the criminal element I know, but after the 1. that. 1. Well, we'll start there and, 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 and then go from that point. Uh, but again, this was clear in the election. This was one of the top issues. President Trump, had the greatest political comeback in history, won 30 states, won all seven swing states, won the popular vote, won an electoral college landslide. This was one of the big issues. He's not, told the I'm, American people he's going to do not, it. I'm this not is disagreeing how, with this that. Is I'm asking believe, how it's going to work. This is how I believe it'll start. And remember, that the, they told him in his first term, oh, he couldn't do certain things. He got them done. I'm convinced he'll get it done, but I also am convinced he's going to start with the criminal element and the 1.3 million. And then who've already been in front of the judge, is, and the judge says you have to be removed. Ultimately, will it be 15 to 20 million, as he promised on the campaign trail? We'll, we, we will see. <laughs> he's not even been inaugurated yet, and already... The promise to remove 15 to 20 million people is, we'll see. What do you think is going on here? Well, you know, you, you used the word mandate before, and clearly, you know, he has a mandate to do a lot of things, but, but that clip shows the limits of this mandate. Um, you have millions of Americans who think that, okay, yeah, if you've committed a crime, you get deported. Not tremendously uh, uh, con controversial. Uh, but Dana Bash was pressing him, well, what about the other 10 million people. And I'm not sure that he has a mandate for this. There's a lot of things that Donald Trump ran on that I think people did not take either seriously or literally. And if he tries to implement them, I mean, if you come in, 
if you come in, you know, your first week in office and um, Robert F. Kennedy issues orders, you know, on vaccines or fluoridation, or if people begin to realize that massive tariffs, in fact, will raise the price of everything they buy at Walmart, and if they begin to see stories of grandmas, and, you know, being separated from their kids um, because of mass deportation, um, I, I wonder about whether or not that was what voters really understood. Now, they should have. Donald Trump was very clear what he was going to do. But I think you saw Jim Jordan squirming that he's claiming that there is this massive mandate, but when he's pressed on exactly what, you know, what are you promising, what will you do, do you notice how he refused to answer that question? And I think this is one of the central questions, you know, in terms of like, what could possibly go wrong? If in fact, we actually see the, the attempt to expel 10 million human beings from this country, um, I'm not sure that, that voters fully understood what that would involve, the impact of it, and the humanitarian disaster that would, be, that would be unfolding in front of our eyes. I mean, Claire, or just to put it back into terms that Trump world seems to appreciate, economic collapse. I mean, the economic collapse of moving 11 to 20 million people out of this country to, I don't know, somewhere else. And, and how do you move them? Do they go by rail? Do they go by bus? Do they go by plane? I mean, Abbott and um, DeSantis had some fun flying a couple dozen folks around and busing. But 11 to 20 million people is a lot of human beings. Um, what do you think? Well, first, it, it, yeah, it's very expensive. Uh, secondly, you're going to be taking resources from law enforcement and or our military that has a job to do in terms of protecting training and protecting our country. Um, and if you take all the resources of the Border Patrol and ICE to do internal uh, domestic arrests, then who's on the border? So it's really a, a, a really a problem. And you know what, Nicole? Um, I was thinking about this this morning as I was looking at what we were going to talk about today. This show and others like it on this network are going to have an opportunity to expose some things. They're going to start doing workplace raids before. And what I look forward to doing and talking to you about are the employers in those raids. Because in the past, when there have been workplace raids, they have rounded up people that didn't have appropriate documentation, and they have, in fact, removed them from the work site and taken them and putting them on the process for deportation. But invariably, the people who hired them were never held accountable. And you can't do that. You can't let someone who knowingly is employing a bucket full of folks who aren't properly documented in this country, you can't let the employer skate free while he's been enjoying probably cheaper than he should be paying labor um, for his given enterprise. And so there's going to be farmers in this country. There's going to be a lot of manufacturing in this country. There's going to be a lot of hospitality, small hotel and motel owners, restaurant owners uh, that are going to have to be arrested if this is going to be done fairly. And just imagine how controversial that's going to become. Von Hilliard, I'll give you a quick last word. Is that me, Nicole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah I actually, I, I'm glad that you brought this up. Apologies there. One place that we're going to have to look out at is my hometown of Phoenix, Maricopa County. Uh, after the transition, I know that there's a sheriff who was just elected there, who was a longtime deputy to Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who was the man behind what he called crime suppression sweeps, but it was to go into particularly brown communities and do these sweeps and do these business busters where Claire is talking about uh, this is going to be one of those moments here where for the last several, about the last decade, there's been a Democrat who has been the sheriff of Maricopa County. And m uh, most of the major cities in America have Democrats who have been at the helm of their sheriffs and police offices. But now, like, for example, in Maricopa County, Donald Trump may actually have somebody, and Jerry Sheridan is his name, who is a constitutional sheriff, who may be an eager, willing partner to go through with uh, uh, some of that federal law enforcement at the local level.